What is going on, I have Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're gonna talk about if muscle gets destroyed when intermittent fasting. I'm going to specifically focus on a Q&A article that was posted on mpbody.com, metabolicprecision.com, I believe, in which they discussed that intermittent fasting can potentially lead to some muscle loss. And I'm gonna go ahead and rebuttal that article in this video. Stay tuned. So if you haven't figured it out yet, no, intermittent fasting does not cause muscle loss. And this article right here indicates that it does. One of the things that he mentioned is BCAAs, that BCAAs is heavily used in the intermittent fasting community and it's pushed as something that, you know, assists and builds muscle, helps build muscle. And I'm in agreement into the fact that BCAAs isn't that big of a deal. BCAAs can literally be found in your food. You don't really need branch chain amino acids as much as the public makes you believe that you need it. So I'm not an advocate for BCAAs at all. And I guess I can't argue with him in terms of BCAAs not being effective, but he led into that argument because he felt that intermittent fasting was detrimental to your muscles. Now, before I get into the research of that, just think of this logically. Your body literally stores fat for this specific reason, for the reason of when you don't eat, your body can utilize that fat storage. It only stores it because you've eaten an excess amount. If it didn't store body fat, this is why I do say that you shouldn't hate body fat that much because it is designed to save your life. If you didn't store any body fat at all and you were at 0% body fat, you would die very quickly if you ate accidentally at a caloric deficit for a short amount of time. Which brings it back to why would your body choose your muscle instead of your body fat when it's literally designed for those moments when you don't eat. That's what's happening in a nutshell. Now let's go ahead and talk about the research. Now this article kinda ticks me off and not even because he's saying that intermittent fasting is detrimental to, to muscle. I don't care about that. I love when people put up their arguments because it allows me to clear up those arguments if those things are floating around. What annoys me is that he makes you have to work 10 times harder to look at the research that he's presenting. So that if you're a normal reader, if you can't click the citation, and then when you go scroll down and see the citation and you can't click it, you might stop right there. But maybe you're like, you know what? No, I want to power through the fact that I can't click this. You'll try to copy the whole thing, right? And paste it onto Google. And then that way, all the places where where that article presented itself, you can go ahead and click that. But when you try to copy, you get a copyright claim from doing copy and paste. And the copyright claim for the entire article is now forcing you not to be able to even copy and paste that. So what you have to do is literally type those things in to Google. So if you don't have the patience, you are not going to do it. Either way, I have the patience because this is what I do and I have a YouTube channel for this. So I went ahead and plugged in all of those studies. For the first study that he was talking about, he's talking about the fact that you need protein synthesis and, and when you work out, your body's necessity for protein synthesis increases substantially over 100% and this lasts for over 48 hours. Then the fractal muscle tissue breakdown also commences. So obviously if you fast, this thing is going to affect you because you're not giving the nitrogen balance and the protein to fight against it, the amino acids, you're not eating that. First of all, there's many studies that have already debunked an anabolic window. But he's not really talking about the anabolic window. He's talking about something kind of adjacent to that and the particular research that he's referencing. But here's the thing. He's using research to make a educated guess about an outcome, although it hasn't been put into practice within his conclusion. Let me explain. It's the equivalent of saying the soil in Africa makes all trees grow tall. Because all of these trees are tall in Africa, Africa soil plants tall trees. You cannot plant a small tree. So any seed you find anywhere around the world will become a tall tree in Africa's soil. So what would a normal average human being do? You would test it. You would get a small tree that normally grows to be small and try to plant it and look to see if it grows to a tall or a small tree. And if it grows to a tall tree, well, maybe there's some validity to this hypothesis. Let's put other seeds and see what happens. That's how it works. So for you to make a conclusion to something, you actually have to test it. You can have a theory, but if you don't test that theory, 
then it doesn't mean anything. Luckily for us, they have tested this multiple times. There's even a meta-analysis out there, 15 clinical trials compiled together by Dr. Steven Anton. 32-week randomized studies exist. We've actually tested, because of this hypothesis, will this affect you negatively when fasting? And the answer is unequivocally no. And actually, the reversed is seen when just implementing caloric restriction. This meta-analysis here shows that fat loss was somewhat similar. However, lean mass was more favorable with the fasting group. The 15 clinical trials compiled by Dr. Steven Anton showed that all of the people doing the 16-8 method intermittent fasting versus the caloric restriction method, both groups lost weight, but lean mass was protected entirely in the fasting group and lean mass was reduced in the caloric restriction only group. Mind you, they're both in a caloric restriction. It's just that one group is eating throughout the day, the other one is doing intermittent fasting. The fasting group actually protected muscle. The caloric restriction group was less effective at protecting muscle. There's also a 32 week trial that was done with an eight week control period. And what did they find by this almost half a year study? That there was 3.5 pounds loss and in the fasting group, there was 2.6 pounds of lean mass loss. So 3.5 pounds for caloric restriction 2.6 pounds for intermittent fasting and remember this is over 32 weeks so obviously muscle will be lost if you're at a continuous caloric restriction but that has nothing to do with fasting no matter what you do if you're at a caloric restriction some muscle will be tapped into it it's not going to be pristine and completely protected but you can do things like intermittent fasting to enhance its protection. Now, some people are saying, well, you know, growth hormone, that doesn't really do anything. No one's saying, uh, at least in my channel and people that base this on science, no one's saying that the growth hormone in and of itself is going to build muscle substantially better. The growth hormone is kind of like a piece to the metabolic puzzle. It will help protect muscle. That's the key, it will help protect muscle because no matter what, when you're losing weight, you're not going to be building muscle. And there's so many different metabolic things that are happening. For example, ketone bodies have been shown to protect muscles because it is utilizing body fat for the energy. The ketones are replacing glucose, thus the glucose within the amino acids, within the protein in your muscle are not going to be utilized because of that switchover the ketones are now being utilized, thus protecting muscle. SIRT1 has been shown to increase, and SIRT1 has shown that it has a positive effect since it is an intracellular protein regulator. All of these things are happening. All of these things are clicking together to create a system, because the short answer is, your body is smart. Your body understands what it needs to do when you're fasting. It needs to protect muscle because then you won't be able to go out and hunt. It needs to protect those things. That's the short answer. Everything I just explained to you in terms of the metabolic switches that are activating are the actual evidence of what's going on in your body that's allowing these things to happen. So this article doesn't even present an actual study showing that intermittent fasting is reducing muscle. It's not showing that at all and then one of the only things that you can actually click on to link to is another person in the same website talking about how he tried intermittent fasting and how he felt low energy and he lost muscle and he was weak and he was small and there's pictures of him being really strong showing that he's really really strong you know he eats seven meals a day so the thing that you link to us to see is anecdotal evidence and i hate anecdotal evidence because it doesn't help the general population. It's just something that worked for him or didn't work for him. And just to cancel out your anecdotal evidence, yeah, I might not be the strongest person in the world, but if you look at me, I've been doing intermittent fasting for five years. This is me in the beginning. This is how I look now. There is obvious muscle growth there. This is not a catabolic transition for five years. I would look like a skinny twig based on this guy's theory of protein synthesis. But once again, that's just anecdotal. That's just me. What I prefer to show you is the actual study. So of course, all my studies will be linked in the description below. You can click them and see them. I kind of wanted to put this video out and I'm not trying to pick on anybody or any website or any company, but there are so many people that have done articles just like this. So this is a perfect way for me to create a video. So if someone asked me a question, I couldn't reference them to this video. Muscle loss does not happen simply because you are intermittent fasting. The number one and most important thing is that you need to be working out, regardless of if you're intermittent fasting or not. And there's already been studies that show that 
throughout the course of the day is where you need to eat. It doesn't really matter if you do it post-workout or pre-workout. The balance comes throughout the day. It's, it's not so micro, it's much more macro when it comes to nitrogen balance, protein synthesis, amino acids, et cetera, et cetera. So I just wanted to do a quick rebuttal to that article. And of course, I wanna thank my patrons for my Patreon and I'm gonna put their names right up here.